Okay, welcome to Lecture 8 for Math 2213. Uh, we're going to cover three things today. We're going to look at some general rules, the, the product rule and permutations and combinations, and we'll look at some simple examples of those. Uh, and then we'll move on to some more complicated examples as well. So we'll start with a, a, a definition of the general product rule. Uh, we saw the product rule last time, and the general product rule just extends this to uh, more than two uh, elements of an event. So we'll define a k-tuple as an ordered collection of k elements, and a k-tuple has uh, n1 choices for the first element, and n2 choices for the second element for every choice of the first element, and so on. n3 choices for the third for every choice of the first two, and so on up to the nk choices for the kth element for every choice of all the previous elements. You may remember when we were talking about the, the product rule before, a, a key component was that you could not have uh, the number of choices for later components depend on earlier components. And so these requirements here, that the number of choices uh, be the same uh, for a certain element for all possible combinations of earlier elements, is the same idea. So the product rule says that if you have a k-tuple like this, then there are n1 times n2 times n3 and so on, up to nk possible k-tuples. So you're just multiplying together the different uh, number of, of choices for each element to get the total number of choices. Let's look at a simple example. So suppose you're at a restaurant and they have four appetizers, three entrees, and five desserts. How many possible meals, assuming that you choose uh, one of each? So that would be pretty simple. There would be four choices for the appetizers, and then three choices for the entrees, and then five choices for the desserts. So that would be uh, 60 choices in all. Just multiply them together using the product rule. And like I said, the, the choices didn't depend um, on each other. So the entree choices don't depend on how many appetizers, and so on. So that's the basic way that you use the product rule. Another concept that we're going to find useful in, uh, in this course is the idea of permutations and combinations. And this is basically a way to answer the question, how many ways can I select k objects from n distinct objects? And the answer to that question actually depends. It depends on whether order matters or not. For example, if I have 15 baseball players and I want to choose a starting lineup, so these are the, the players who are going to uh, go to bat first, and, the, and there's a certain order to them, then order does matter. And so we would use permutations to answer this question. Uh, if uh, an instructor has 10 possible questions that they want to use for a test and they only have three that they're going to put on the test, the order doesn't really matter. I mean, I guess you could say that the first, second, third question are different, but the, the key thing is whether the questions are on the test or not, which ones get chosen. And so if order is unimportant, then you would use a combination. Let's use these uh, examples to motivate the general formulas for permutations and combinations. So the first question was 15 baseball players have a start up line up, starting lineup of 9. So you can sort of imagine 9 spots in which you are going to put baseball players. And in the first position, uh, you would have all 15 that you could pick from. And then the next position, you'd have 14. And then there'd be 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and 7. And that would be the number of, multiplying those together would give you the number of possible starting lineups you could choose. The order matters, and so that's why we, we count it that way. We don't have to worry about, well, what if I, it's the same thing if I switch the first and the second player. Now, this is sort of tedious to write that out every time, um, and so we have a general notation for these these permutations. More generally, we'll use p with a kn uh, subscript to denote the number of ways that we can choose k objects from n. So in this particular case, this would be p, and we have 15 objects, and we want to choose 9. So it would be 9, 15. And uh, the general formula for this is uh, P 
Kn is going to be n factorial over n minus k factorial. Uh, that's just a, a handy way of writing. Uh, start at n and multiply until you multiply the decreasing numbers until you get the right number that you want. Um, in this case, we wanted 9. So we kept going until we had 9 numbers. Uh, this n exclamation, of course, is n factorial. n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times dot 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 times 2 times 1. So that's the, the general concept for a permutation. Now, the second question we had was, what do you do in the case of a combination? So if we had 10 questions and wanted to put 3 on a test, uh, order doesn't matter. How many ways can we do that? Well, let's suppose for a minute that we had one particular order in. So we'd pick questions 1, 3, and 5. Um, there are a lot of orderings that are possible, but we only want to count that once. So let's think about all the different ways we could write out 1, 3, and 5. We could have question 1, 3, 5. We could have question 1, 5, 3. Those are the only two ways that we could have question 1 first. Then we could have uh, question 3 first, 3, 1, 5, or 3, 5, 1. And then we could have question 5 first. So we could have 5, 1, 3, and 5, 3, 1. So there's, in this case, there are six possible orderings. And in fact, it turns out for this problem that, in general, there would be six possible orderings for any three questions that we chose. And so that means that we can basically calculate the number of possible ways that we can choose three from ten as uh, looking at all ways we could choose 3 if order matters, and then divide through by the number of possible orderings. So it would be the number of ways if order matters. Oops. If order matters. Divide through by number of possible orderings. And in this case, we would have uh, p of p310, 10, 10, 10 permute 3, divided by 6, or uh, 10 times 9 times 8 over 6, which is going to be the same as, if we simplify there, uh, simplify here, that would be 120, 120 possible orderings. One thing I should note is that uh, we got the number of orderings of the questions 1, 3, and 5 by uh, just writing them out, but that would be tedious in general. We can think about all the ways that you can uh, reorder them in general. So if I had, uh, say, uh, well, it turns out that there are three factorial ways to to reorder those, because you can imagine that there are three choices for the first question, and then two choices for the next one, and one choice for the last. So in general, in general, we have six factorial ways to order three questions. or k factorial to order k objects. So now we can put this together in a, a general formula. So in fact, I've already written this out here. <laughs> anyway, um, it, we can write this this way. Well, that's what we did above. We can use the 3 factorial instead of just putting 6 there. And we can write it out this way. Uh, as well as what we did there. We'll get the same thing, but it's probably worth checking that. Uh, so p310 is 10 factorial over 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial. So that would be uh, 10 times 9 times 8 um, over 6, because the 10 factorial over 7 factorial, you go 10, 9, 8, and then you 
to have 7654321 on the numerator and the denominator. They cancel. And then 3 factorial is 6. And that's the same 120 that we had before. Here's a general case of, uh, of this. Um, so in general, if we want to choose k objects from n, uh, when order doesn't matter, we're going to write this in the following way. We'll have a, a bracket with an n at the top and a k at the bottom. And I would pronounce that n choose k. And the formula for that is just the general case of what we had above. n choose k is uh, n permute k divided by k factorial or n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. So that's a, a pretty simple, uh, oops, I cut myself off there, a simple formula. OK, so let's look at a really simple example, uh, or a slightly more complicated example, but not too bad. Um, so suppose you're playing the game Crazy Eights, in which eight cards are dealt, and we're interested in calculating the probability that an eight card hand has no eights in it. So we have to use the usual sort of counting rule. We want to figure out the number of events, uh, number of outcomes in the event A over the number of possible outcomes. So let's work on the denominator first, n. Um, here, n is the number of ways to deal uh, an eight card hand. And that would be uh, 52 choose 8. Remember that order doesn't matter here. So uh, it doesn't matter uh, what order the cards are dealt in. We just are we're wondering how many different ways we can get eight cards out of 52. So that would be 52 factorial over 8 factorial, 44 factorial. Now the number of ways we can uh, deal no 8 hands, so that would be n of a is the number of ways to deal no 8 hands. Well, this is a similar principle to before, but what's going on now is that we're looking at a deck with 48 cards in it, with the four, the, the four eights removed. So what we're saying now is that instead of having uh, 52 choose 8, we'd be looking at 48 choose 8. From th the 48 cards that are not 8s, how can, uh, these are the ways we could choose a, a no 8 hand. So that would be 48 factorial over 8 factorial, 44 factorial. And we can put these together to get uh, an expression for the whole thing. So that would be the probability of no 8s would be 52 cho 48 choose 8 over 52 choose 8. And we can simplify that. Um, that would work out to be 48 factorial over 8 factorial, 40 factorial, divided by 52 factorial over 8 factorial, 44 factorial. And we can simplify that a little bit. Um, you would uh, be canceling a lot of things here. Uh, and so once you, well, the eight factorials would cancel, obviously. And between the others, you'd have some other things that cancel as well. Uh, so in particular, uh, you would have, uh, well, when you simplify this out, you get uh, uh, 48 times 47 times, and so on, down to 41 over 52 times 51, wait a minute, yeah, Then and then you'd go down 51 down to 45, and that works out to be, after some more cancellation, 0 0.501.